Y'all are not gonna believe what somebody sent me in the mail. This might just be the coolest blower accessory I have ever seen. So this is the Extreme Blower Spreader HD. I guess that just means it's the bigger one. But my friends at Real World Wildlife Products sent this to me and it's not made by them. It's uh, made by a company called Extreme Blower Products. And basically what it is, is it's a hopper that goes on your blower that turns your blower into a seed spreader. Check that out. We're gonna go ahead and put it on the blower and test it out. Something that I think is very considered is they actually included the proper size hole saw in this box. Here's something that's also encouraging. It's made in the United States and there's their information there, their website information as well. I'll try to put a link in the comments if anybody's interested. So that actually went on pretty easy. It took about 10 minutes and that was with moving the camera around. So if you don't have to do that, I expect it would go on a whole lot quicker. You may have noticed that I did have some trouble getting this base on here and it doesn't fit perfectly to the tube and these straps are pretty stretched out. My guess is that's because the, I, I would think that this is probably designed for more domestic brands like DeWalt and Milwaukee blowers, but this is an Atchafor, so it's kind of an oddball. If y'all are interested in one of these, I bet you could probably call the company and just ask which blowers it fits best on to make sure it'll fit yours okay but overall I'm really impressed with it it's got this funnel attached to it which will come in extremely handy for pouring stuff into the hopper it's built out of really thick plastic it's got this gate on it right here to adjust your seed or fertilizer flow and when you're not using the hopper you can just close this up and have a normal blower so you're not destroying your blower either but anyway pretty cool um, I'm really impressed with it so far we'll see how it works later but anyway right now before we use this we need to go ahead and finish harrowing up the field we need to get some fertilizer on it and then we'll see how this thing works So if you watched the last video, you saw me working in this field. I ran out of time before I was able to get it finished up the other day. So what we want to do now is go ahead and get this middle section all haired up and then we'll get some fertilizer out here. Then we'll get it all worked into the soil and get planting done. Also explained on the last video, this was actually a soybean field, but it got browsed so heavily that there's just not a whole lot of beans left for the winter. So we're just kind of starting over. I just can't walk around out here without trying to look for arrowheads. That's pretty well got that. Let's uh, see if we can get some fertilizer on it.
So we're gonna put in 250 pounds of triple 17. I used Google Earth to measure this field and it's 1.3 acres. 250 pounds of fertilizer is probably just a little bit light for 1.3 acres, but it's triple 17, so I'm thinking that'll make up for some of it. Plus the last time I bought fertilizer, it was like 21 bucks for a bag. So I'm probably not gonna buy any more. This is just gonna have to do. So let's go ahead and get this spread. So it has been like a week since that last clip that you saw. I have just been so busy. I have not had time to get these seeds in the ground, but it probably worked out to our advantage because we've got rain in the forecast over the next few days. So hopefully once we get these seeds in the ground, it'll get some rain on top of them. So let's check out what we're working with here. We're gonna put out a harvest salad from Real World Wildlife Products. Let's see what's in it. So in this bag, we've got wheat, Austrian winter peas, oats, and barley. And then on top of that, we're gonna put this plot topper. I know this is pretty difficult to see, but this has got radishes, purple top turnips, rape, sugar beets, a couple kinds of collards, crimson clover, and uh, radishes. So this harvest salad and plot topper is gonna to take care of about an acre, and this is gonna take care of our last quarter of an acre to third of an acre. This is, all this is, is the, the uh, harvest salad and the plot topper already mixed together.
Here's a look at what we put out here. This is the plot topper with the radishes and turnips and clover and so forth. This is the harvest salad with the Austrian peas and barley and oats and stuff. And this is the deadly dozen. It pretty well looks exactly like the harvest salad because all it is is the harvest salad with some plot topper mixed in. You can see one of the brassica seeds right there. So that's got our seeds in. And at this point, your best bet is to like drag them in. But my drag isn't all that great. So I'm gonna set my disc or my hair or whatever you wanna call it to a really, really light setting. And we're just gonna kind of sling some dirt on top of these seeds. So we finally got the plot in and it is out of my hands at this point. All we need is some rain. And if nothing else, it looks really nice. I think this is the nicest looking plot that I've uh, ever planted. We'll see what it looks like when it comes up, but that pipe on the back does a great job smoothing it out. And again, all I really wanted to do with the disc or the hair, people seem to call it different things in different areas, but all I really wanted to do was sling some dirt on those seeds. I didn't want to till the dirt. I just wanted to sling it and then kind of smooth it out because you don't need a whole lot of dirt on those seeds, especially the brassicas. Your best bet again is just to drag that stuff in. Let's go check the other food plot. So this plot out here we planted three or four weeks ago, something like that, and it, it didn't do that great in the first place because it, I think the turkeys ate a lot of the seed. Some of the seed was too deep. I just didn't like it. So I came out here and I spread out some more rye, and right after I did that, we got a lot of rain, and I do mean a lot of rain. And what happened then is my rye seeds puddled up and came up in big clumps instead of in a nice uh, even pattern like I really wanted. I ended up spreading some more clover and some brassicas out here and then I just had to make myself stop because it was getting out of control. But right now I'm actually pretty happy with it. You can see that we've got, we do have a few weeds of course. I actually didn't use any herbicide on this plot just to see what would happen. But it's actually doing pretty good. We've got some brassicas coming up. There's one right there. Got a lot of really good winter rye out here. A lot of good browse there. Like I said, just a few weeds, but nothing really to write home about. Also got some pigweed out here. This stuff is just awful. Pick, pull it up by the roots whenever you can, throw it in the woods. We got some clover out here as well. This right here, this area right in here is really what I envisioned or wanted the whole plot to look like. Um, and it may still do that. It's coming along. It's just kind of thin in some places, but there's a lot of traffic out here. A lot, the deer are really enjoying it. They're browsing out here and uh, it is actually uh, do it, serving its purpose. So that's gonna do it for this video. Big shout out to Real World Wildlife Products for the seed, and a uh, big shout out to the company that made the blower accessory. I'll put a link down in the description for that. I really like that blower accessory. It really works exactly like it's supposed to work. I do think it would be a lot better for a, a half acre plot and under because you make a lot of trips. It's a pretty small hopper. It only holds maybe six pounds or so. So if you have smaller plots, I think that's probably a good option for you. If you have bigger plots, you should probably 
probably just stick with the slingers with the bags. Also, I didn't get a great fit between the hopper and the blower tube. And I think it's probably because it just wasn't designed for that particular blower. But if you're interested in one, they do work exactly like they're supposed to work. They're designed really well. They're built really well, made in the United States. And I'll put a link down in the description here in case y'all are interested in that. I don't get any kickbacks. I did get the products for free, but I don't get a kickback from it. It is a good product, so if you're interested, check it out. That's going to do it. I will see y'all on the next one. Thank you for watching.